Welcome to See You on the Other Side, where the world of the mysterious collides with the world of entertainment. A discussion of art, music, movies, spirituality, the weird, and self-discovery. And now, your hosts, musicians and entertainers who have their own weakness for the weird, Mike and Wendy from the band Sunspot. Hi, fellow weirdos. Today's t- <laughs> today's topic <laughs> is about making a deal with the devil. All right, we've all heard the story and stuff. We've all heard the story of someone who sells his soul to the devil in return for some kind of earthly reward. Like when Ralph Macchio did it in that movie so he could play a sweet guitar solo, right? Yes, he absolutely did. We'll be talking about that movie in just a little bit. <laughs> oh, good. I was hoping. <laughs> That's right. He he does play a sweet guitar solo, and that is a, a totally sweet movie. But, uh, Wendy, if, if you were going to sell your soul to the devil, like your eternal soul... <sighs> What do you think you would sell it for? Like, what's the what's your oh. what's your price? Oh, you're starting off with the easy questions. Yeah. Well, what would I mean? Some people. What would you sacrifice your soul for? For for something right now? What's something you want so bad that you just be like, I'll I'll, I'll do it. I don't know. I mean, I think it would have to be something like longevity and good health for me and my friends and family <laughs> oh see that's a nice thing well it's a high price the devil's gonna like own your soul you know you have to make it something worth it right that's that's right you should make it something worthwhile i would sell it to be the musical guest on saturday Night live i think that would be pretty sweet wow. to be the musical guest on saturday Night live i would sell my soul to satan and let <laughs> let him have it <laughs> Let him. I mean, I think let him have it. What would, Does you know, anybody really watch that show anymore, though? I still watch that show. It doesn't matter. I just would like to be the the musical guest, and I would. I All would, right. My soul's not being used right now for anything. So, and <laughs> oh, it, yeah. No, I mean, I'd love to too, but I mean, the devil's gonna own you, and you know what that means. That means yeah. once you leave this planet, he's gonna, he's be gonna not horrible horrible <laughs> things to you or he's gonna make me do his bidding like he's gonna, he's right? gonna he hunt people around the world who do bad things like spawn or that guy in that um oh there was a show uh a couple of years ago where a guy had to hunt down souls for the devil called reaper reaper was the name of the show nice and so i would be like reaper and i would do i totally do that i'm just saying i'd I'd let it go for that. So you're saying you really want to play on Saturday Night Live more than anything uh, else in the whole world? Like no. More than anything. I'm just saying that's the low end. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying I'd go, f- like, that's, like, that's the minimum that I would go for. It's, it's kind of like if you're selling your house and here's your original, like, the original thing you want to get. And obviously when somebody comes in, it's just like, oh, if it's enough to pay off my loan, I'll take it. Sure, Plank- sure. Being the music guest on Saturday Night Live would be, uh, that would be enough to pay off my loan. Huh. So that's what I would go. I mean, the top end, obviously, I'd go for a lot more stuff. I mean, not just music. I'd probably want to be, oh, I don't know, somebody like Richard Branson. Somebody with more money that just can say stupid things whenever he wants, can fly to the moon. I would want to be one of those people who can fly to the moon if I possibly could. Okay. Okay. Well, anyway, so that's, I mean, that's the minimum I would sell my soul for and you would sell for longevity or maybe something nice for your friends. And that, I mean, we had to- well, no, I'm, I'm talking about like living a long time and feeling healthy and, you know, having a long life with no major health problems. Okay. All right. You know, that's uh, I, I or how about this one? How about being able to, being able to live a long life with no major health problems and being able to do whatever you wanted to your body? Oh, so that's pretty right. cool. So, right, so you like I could you could eat all the all the processed sugar yes, and stuff you I like wanted. That. I like you that. could just you could just. <laughs> that's a nice. Twist. I would just drink corn syrup I mean, for every day. <laughs> like I wouldn't drink water anymore. I just drink corn syrup, and I'd still be perfectly healthy. I think that would be like that. Just a little caveat, because you can you can already live a long healthy life just by doing you know healthy things. 
But you can't live a long... Maybe. You can't live a long, long, healthy life like sucking the end of a tailpipe or something like that. That's true, but I mean, there's other things that can happen to you. Yes. You could get in an accident. You could, you know... And you know Satan's going to... You know something. Satan's Whatever. going to do that. You know, you'll say like, oh, whatever right. I do to my body. And then the fine print will be, you didn't say whatever your car does to your body. <laughs> and all of a sudden your car will hit you and then you'll be like in a weird S shape the rest of your life. Right. Uh, be, no, I don't... That's what the devil does. He Right? So like my, he doesn't make fair deals. No, absolutely not. Like if we said like yeah, I'll sell my soul to be the musical guest on Saturday Night Live. Um, it would he would try to make it be the episode that wasn't aired because of some kind of NBC worker strike or something like that. Is that or that like the guest is somebody totally unpopular? <laughs> right. Or, or yeah, or something stupid happens. Like it's all the fine print, and and that's kind of what the devil does. Mm -hmm. To the people that make this. So it's never a sweet deal. At right. least from what I've heard from my friends that have sold their soul to Satan. And from all the movies. Yes. Which are clearly based on reality. That's right. No, that the devil and Daniel Webster was actually a documentary. If you didn't realize that. Yeah, it's true. It was a documentary. What about Oh God, You Devil? <laughs> <That one. laughs> yes, George Burns really was God. He lived a longer, as long as him. Um. But we, you know, we're talking about that because that's a, that is a that is a thing that's a theme through fiction, from uh, you know starting like the first you know the first book I read of her was like Doctor Faust and 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 Faust and the story of that guy that sold his soul to the devil in return for riches and fame and and all that kind of thing, and it really continues, uh, not in an actual like a fictional thing, but people like artists had legends around them about that they played so well that they sold their soul to the devil for it so like real right. people like obviously now, like now if somebody said like oh yeah that guy sold his soul to the devil the rest of us would be like you're you're an idiot if you think that is true but in like the 1700s or the late 1600s when they were they were burning people at the stake for witchcraft mm, this is something they might have thought was true and um, we talk about that. So, the, so one of the first uh, people that I could find who was rumored to sell his soul to the devil was Giuseppe Tartini. Oh, Giuseppe! Giuseppe. How could oh, you? You sold your soul, oh, you son of a bitch! <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, but Giuseppe. First, Giuseppe does not sound like a guy. That sounds like Giuseppe sounds like a guy who's gonna make you spaghetti. Not like, you know, right? Or Giuseppe's like, I like his meatballs. And not um, not a guy who sold his soul to the devil. No, he was born in 1692. 1692 was right in the middle of the Salem witch trials. So what we were just talking about, that people were still getting, uh, you know, executed for people, uh, you know, for people believing that they made a deal with Satan or they had the mark of the witch, things like that. 1692, it's happening, and it's not happening. Like, now we, we hear things happen. You know, oh, that person got their hand cut off because they thought they were possessed. And it happens, like, in the Congo or someplace that's, you know, remote and crazy. But in 1692, people were being... This was it happened in Massachusetts, right? I mean, this... I mean... Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, in Massachusetts. Like, obviously, Massachusetts... Right. Like we and I mean we expect yeah, it to so go a little slower. <laughs> and yeah, I mean that's a while ago, but it wasn't that long ago in the great scheme of things, you know? No. Not not I mean years. Right. We couldn't have a like our brains have not we we have the same brains that those people have. You know? No, I'm not well we do. We have the same like physical brains. We, like there's more You don't have to be proud of it. No, and most of it's from Facebook. Like most of it like is full of things. <laughs> From social media in our brains. Right. So, yes, we have more stuff shoved in our brains and, and more history and things. But they, um, the brains aren't different. So the idea of it would be unbelievable for us to believe something completely ludicrous is just not out of the question. That's true. Yeah. Uh, 1692, Massachusetts, this happened. But, but the Giuseppe Tartini, he didn't live in Massachusetts. There was nobody named Giuseppe. In Massachusetts in 1692. I don't know that for sure, but I'm pretty sh I'm pretty sure that nobody's making meatballs. No. Um, but oh, so <laughs> 1692. <laughs> I was looking up 
I was I was looking up some of his work. He he uh he's got a, a track called the Devil's Trill. Okay. And uh, I, so a trill. You want to explain what a trill is to maybe some of our non musical listeners? Sure. A trill is when you you're playing a note and then you play the note adjacent to it, really quickly on and off, and alternate the two notes. So it's kind of like. <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> That's a trill. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. That. I don't know if you can you do it with your voice. I, I I play the violin and it's a very common commonly used uh technique on the violin, but I and I've on piano too, but or on guitar with the you know when you play a hammer on real fast. And you, yes, you can do it with your voice. <laughs> yeah, and vocal trills. I don't. I mean, a lot of people can do them. I, yeah, that's. Some, I'm just making. I'm just making noises with my mouth right now. I'm just, I'm just gonna motorboat this microphone. Um. So, but the devil's trill. So the devil's trill, which the devil can do it with his voice. It was said to be inspired by a dream that he had that he was a servant of the devil. So Giuseppe had that dream. And then, so people were, you know, they, they kind of, they considered him like, oh, this song is kind of, it's called The Devil's Trill already. It was inspired by a dream that had Satan in it. Um, they considered it a satanic song. That Man, just, I bet that dr- The Devil's Trill is super scary sounding too, like, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, uh, I, think, I think that's exactly what it is. And and you just gave me my, my newest Sorry. ring, my newest ringtone. <laughs> Oh Thank man, I just, yeah, I I just totally distorted the. Uh... <laughs> no, no, it was it was great. It was great. Um, right. Okay, th- but the song is still popular today. Giuseppe Tartini has got more hits on YouTube than we do. Whoa! Uh, yeah, it, so Itzhak Perlman. I mean, he's a famous violiner guy. Uh, excellent, excellent. <laughs> right, yes. vi- right. He plays. He's a violiner. The he, finest to the fine. I have his autograph. In fact, you do. I where'd do. you meet? Where'd you meet Itzhak Perlman? I met him in high school. He was playing with the Milwaukee Youth or the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra, and they let the uh, the students come and watch one of the rehearsals, and then he signed autographs and said hi to everybody afterwards. Wow, that's pr- that's that's pretty I was, cool. I was like a a fangirl like <laughs> sure all the orc dorks were there lining up for their autographs it was great yeah well that and that's great that you got to meet him so yeah Ikman Ein violiner Itzhak Perlman <laughs> right the super I mean he's the most famous who's a more famous violin player than that that's a lie that people he, I mean he probably did make a deal with the devil because the way he plays doesn't sound like any other human I've heard sure and he I mean he's a badass and and, yeah. okay, and there's somebody named v- Vanessa May who is a, a, a sound? It sounds like she's one of those YouTube sensations. Yeah, that sounds like a newer. It's ten, not like ten, Giuseppe. Ten million hits for Giuseppe Tartini's wow. "The Devil's Trill." So, so you know, three hundred and twenty-two years ago, like we're talking about people talking about musicians in the twentieth century saying, "Oh, they made a deal with the devil." This they've been talking about this stuff for three hundred years. Um, and Giuseppe's the first one I can find. The first one in like real life that I can find. Obviously, Faust is a by Goethe. And there's an opera on that, right? On what? Faust is an it's a play. Oh. And then it's also an opera. I I think I should have studied this at some point in my in in my literary career. Yeah, that one I'm afraid I don't know. It's not in my uh Trivia wheelhouse, but it's it's fictional. That's that's the thing. Got it. And well, and they'll call that then um, a Faustian bargain, and it's an agreement where someone abandons their spiritual values or moral principles in order to obtain wealth or other benefits. Uh-huh. So when people when people sell themselves, you know, so let's say you're working for a company that's doing something you know is wrong or you feel morally wrong about, but it is. Um, uh, but it makes you a lot of money. That's a Faustian bargain. Got it. So, okay. you know, we talked before about making a deal with the devil, what you would do for that, your soul for worldly gains. And that probably wasn't a good question because it's ridiculous because <laughs> it's saying like, what would you, what would you give your immortal soul up for? What but would you what, ask the genie if you had three wishes? Right. Okay. Hey, I know. That was an unfair. That was an <laughs> unfair question. Started with off with that one. So. so let's go back to a Faustian bargain. So, what is something that you would give up 
your uh, moral principles or spiritual mm. values for oh, in, in order to make a bunch of money. Well, that's almost like giving up your soul or trading your soul for some kind of, you know, financial gain or fame, whatever, right? I mean, your, it your is. morals and your, that kind of like comprises your soul in a way, no? No, that's right. That's right. It is, but what have, um, you know, I think about it, I think a Faustian bargain is more realistic than obviously selling your soul because I think of different jobs I have taken mm. for things where I have done things that I think are morally questionable. I mean, it's not like I was a, an assassin, like doing <laughs> wet work for the CIA or anything like that. But there, the things I've done, which I find morally questionable for money because I'm like, oh, this may not be completely 100% on the up and up, but in the end, I get a few bucks from it. Mm. And and so I think I've taken odd jobs and stuff like that or um it's hard to That's think a of good something question. Yeah. It's hard it's hard to think of something really specific right now, but I'm sure I've done it. Sure. I'm, you know, probably every time we're on stage and we tell people to drink more beer and they might be driving home, that's a Faustian bar. Yeah, I mean, I would say that that's on that goes on the like lower end of the scale, though. But sure, I mean, yeah, I could see what you're saying. And I've probably, I mean, sometimes if it's a song, I particularly it's like, is there any songs you hate to play? But we do like if we play some covers at a show. Like, is there a song that you hate that feels like a Faustian bargain? Like when we when we play certain, like it's like, oh man, we play that song. That's a song that I feel like I'm selling my soul to play. Um, I I don't know if there's any I'm I'm to that point with. There's many that I'm I'd like to I wouldn't care to play again. But whenever we play Brown Eyed Girl by Van Morrison, I just made a Faustian bargain yeah. with the people in the in the bar. I'm just, you know, I feel like Brown Eyed Girl is saying, here's a little bit of my soul, just so your drunken ass can get up and dance to your jam one time. Um, Yeah. So I think that's a, that work. Yeah, I think there's several like that. I mean, but that's a, that's a, that's a complicated discussion though, because, you know, there's, people are still enjoying it, having a good time and it's contributing to the whole end product of the show having a successful yeah. show or what, you know. Yeah. I, I I just mean that if there's certain things that we feel that we're not, don't do, I mean, maybe that was the, the yes. closest. I mean, that's not really sacrificing your morals just to play somebody's stupid right. song. Like if we were I, purists, then we would just never play covers at all. And then we would probably never get any shows either. <laughs> no, I'm just that's, that's, that's right. <laughs> no, that's right. Shows. And I mean, I, I, I think the closest I came to a Faustian bargain is when I, uh, at the end of the time of working in the healthcare industry, when I was working on hospital billing, I felt like what it was, was, but it was an, like a lot of money for not yeah. doing a lot of work. And I'm like, this is great. And then I realized that it's, this is all contributing to System. the downfall of the human race. Um, so that definitely that, but at the same time, um, it was great to take vacations or spend money on things and not have to worry about it. So yeah, anyway. That's probably a better question than what would you sell your soul for? Because this thing that we don't even know if we have. That seems like something that would be good for the listeners to contact us by email and let us know. What do you think? Uh, what do you think you would do? To, like, what kind of sacrifice would you make for money? Right. Did you ever make an ad for a cigarette company aimed Ooh. at children? You know, for, <laughs> or something, or like a. Uh, a, you know, a, a beer ad aimed at uh, abusive people or something. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that we would do that are morally questionable for the dollar. Um, but did Niccolo Paganini do it for virtuosity? Um, he, he's a violinist as well. He's a violiner. Yes, he is. Uh, like Itzhak and uh, Giuseppe. So, I mean, he's the one they always talk about. Um, when, yeah. when they talk about the, the first great example of legend music, legendary musicians who made a, a deal with the devil. Um, his solos were notoriously difficult to play, like just exceptionally difficult to play, and like impossible. And other people couldn't do it. And uh, they said he was able to do supernatural things on stage, like he could sight read music just and nail it, you know, right away. 
Now, doesn't this just make you wish there was video back then? Uh, well, of course. Because I want to see that. I, I, I mean, the accounts reading about it and stuff is cool, and it's like leaves a lot for your imagination. But to be able to actually see the guy like just ripping it up. But we live in a day and age where you have to. It's uh, you know, it it's video or it didn't happen. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. And yep. like we need to be, and that's why people they go to a concert, something like that. They want to show that they were at the concert, and when they see a celebrity, they just don't want a picture of the celebrity or an autograph anymore. Because an autograph, you could just write that yourself, like or buy it on eBay. Exactly. So they want to have a, a selfie with the celebrity, and that's everybody proving it now is as to where they were. So right? I, I mean, obviously, two hundred years ago, two hundred fifty years ago, when Paganini was rolling about, <laughs> um. Like and people just said like yeah he was awesome well we nobody just don't... painted any any self portraits with him behind right. them right Pixar it didn't happen I want to see what this guy <laughs> did um but what I like is they talk about his effect on audiences so when he said when he played people said that he hypnotized the audience that's and so cool he was a supernatural presence like he was possessing the crowd imagine that yeah I mean I have you ever been to a show where you felt possessed. No. Yeah. No, I can't I've, say I have. I've seen some really amazing performances, but nobody's supernaturally good. No, and anything that's impressed me that much, it's usually due to special effects, um, pyrotechnics, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> like right. Vegas magician style kind of things that it's like, you you know that it's, there's things beyond the human making this possible. So this is this is how jaded we are. We talk about stuff like, have you ever seen something supernatural? Nah, most of the stuff nope. I've seen is basically a load of crap. It's all fake. Everything yeah. is fake. I don't like it unless there's explosions. <laughs> I understand. Um, I but, like it. I just don't, you know, believe it's... I mean, I know everything's a show. Hollywood. Yes. No, it is It is absolutely a show. And, uh, you know, Paganini, Paganini his... Uh, he could have had a great publicist, too. Because, I mean, when people believed in Satan... Like they really did in the you know seventeenth and eighteenth century, they believed in the devil. Like we don't believe in the devil. Like I talked about, what would you sell yourself for? And we're all like, ha ha ha! I wouldn't right. sell it for anything. Um, but those people believed like that Satan existed and was trying to tempt them every single day. So when you said that when you when your publicist, I don't know if he had a publicist. Like he didn't have somebody on you know in Manhattan or whatever calling other people up and saying like, well, this guy's really good. You're gonna have to see him. He 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 made a deal with he made a deal with Lucifer, <laughs> right? Uh, but he's not just amazing. He's like devil amazing, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, like he, he you're gonna see him and you're gonna you're gonna think you're gonna think he made a deal with Satan, which is like <laughs> us like saying. You're going to see this guy perform, and it's like he made a deal with Osama bin Laden. And you, what? You know, uh, that would that's like what it was saying. So it's just yeah. very, it got people riled up. It got people interested, and obviously it worked. Good promoter. 200, 250 years later, we're still talking about Nicola Paganini. Yeah. Right? And not, I mean, obviously he was awesome. Well, but right. I'm sure there was a lot of awesome players, just like there was a lot of awesome players in the late 70s, but we still talk about Eddie Van Halen and nobody talks about the guitar player from Thin Lizzy anymore or um, Robin Trower anymore. Um, but speaking of the devil, <sighs> um, the most famous of the, of the modern era. And I, modern, I'm extending to the, any part of the 20th century. This is going back to the, the gloomy Sunday days we were in. Um, Robert Johnson is, I mean, the most famous person uh, in American musical history that they say made a deal with Satan. And that's what we were t talking about before. They made a movie about it starring the Karate Kid himself, Ralph Macchio, called Crossroads. It was in the 80s. I saw it on like opening, I saw like a, like a preview screening of it? I don't remember. There was like a free, it was on the north side of Milwaukee and so it was free and so we drove all the way up there on like the 4th of July or something like that to see it. And uh, anyway, it was about somebody selling his soul, selling his soul to the devil to be a great guitar player. And it was based on the story of Robert Johnson who there's a place in Mississippi that, that people who love the blues still go to. There's a crossroads of street and that's where legendarily it said that he sold Robert Johnson sold his soul to the devil to be able to play the Delta Blues 
in such a badass way. Interesting. And so that's what the movie's about. And the movie's great. Steve Vai played the uh the like the devil like the devil's guitar player in that movie. So that's the first time Steve Vai is in a movie. <laughs> no, is is that story in any way related to the the like devil went down to Georgia? I I don't know. I don't think I so. was just curious because I always think of that when I you know sure looking for a soul to sell and then the guy sells his soul to play the violin or the fiddle if you will yes he does he he, he plays the fiddle like robert johnson or steve Vai or yeah. or, or or ralph macchio <laughs> right would have played the guitar Let, let's look real quick and see if there's one that's any specific inspiration for the devil went down to george yeah. by that charlie daniels band yeah because that's the one I always think of when I think of the the deal with the devil. It's the that furious violin player just ripping it up. Well, Charlie. So Charlie Daniels uh, himself stated in interviews, and this is coming from Wikipedia, so obviously it's the truth. Um, he stated in interviews, "I don't know where it came from. It just did." Well, I think I might know where it came from. It might have come from an old poem called "The Mountain Whooper Will" that <laughs> Stephen Vincent Benet wrote. Many, many years ago, it was in 1925, that I had in high school. Either that or Jersey. <laughs> Charlie Daniels. All right. So uh, he doesn't explicitly talk about uh, the crossroads or anything when it comes to the devil yeah. went down to Georgia. All but, right. But I can see where you're coming from when it, you know, when it they came. They just seemed an awful lot alike. Well, Stephen Benet also wrote The Devil and Daniel Webster. Which, you know, is about a man that sold a soul and then he's defended by Daniel Webster in court against the devil when the, when the contract comes oh, due. Nice. And they made a really funny Simpsons based off it and it's a, made a movie with Alec Baldwin, but there's a really great movie where Jennifer Love Hewitt plays the devil in that movie. Sweet. Which, yes. She is devilish. But, uh, <laughs> but she sold her, her soul for those. Yeah. <laughs> the she's, yeah she's, she sold her soul for some things. Um, <laughs> But uh, the, there's one from the, the the 1930s and 1940s. It's a real good version of The Devil and Daniel Webster, which okay. deals with the same thing. Um, but they talk about that in the movie Crossroads. Robert Johnson also, I mean, he wrote songs like Me and the Devil or A Hellhound on My Trail. And and blues is a superstitious culture. Like it's, you know, the, the songs, you know, uh, um, I Put a Spell on You and and Voodoo and the whole deal. Yeah. So uh, thinking about Robert Johnson selling his soul to Satan to be a great guitar player, um, he also died young. He died of poisoning at 27 years old. So we'll revisit Robert Johnson when we talk about the 27 Club. Oh, yeah. And, and the curse. I did of, not know he was in that club. He was, he's in the club, and he died of poisoning, too. That's Probably, creepy. Well, well, these guys, I mean, so Robert Johnson, you listen to his music, and he plays alone. So it's just him and a steel guitar, and, and he plays alone. Like all by himself? Like all by himself. And so he's, uh, that just reminded me of the Green Day hidden track where it's like, I was all by myself. Oh, I was making a blues joke like, what's that oh. song? You know. I play alone. All oh, yeah. By myself. <laughs> okay. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. No, I'm in my own thing here. That's okay. But, but Robert Johnson, however, was also in his own thing because he played alone. He traveled. And, um, I mean, I think it was a jealous lover. I mean, a je- I mean the the husband or the boyfriend of a jealous lover, because Robert Johnson's rolling around playing music, and you know how those girls like the musicians. Yeah. Um, they like Robert Johnson, and he he did it with, with the wrong man's woman, and so even the devil couldn't save him from poisoning at twenty seven years old. Wow. He ma- and go ahead. Whenever I hear of poisoning, it just it makes me think of like Shakespearean, you know, like <laughs> yeah, like who dies of poisoning? Right. You know, it actually happens in real life. It, it seems like it. It only happens in plays and movies and stuff, but apparently it's a real thing. No, dudes get poisoned, man. Blues it's crazy. Blues players in the 1930s get poisoned. Sad. Speaking of blues um, and, and, and the devil, uh, when you talk about Led Zeppelin, now people, they also had a strange fascination with, with the devil and Satan and stuff. And, um, and the Lord of they, the Rings. And and the Lord of the Rings, absolutely. We um, we we'll probably have to do an entire episode on Led Zeppelin and the occult one of these days because they have a million stories about. Yeah, they're them. they're worthy of their own episode. 
So, I mean, Led Zeppelin wasn't just obsessed with the occult. They also, like a lot of the English bands from the uh, late 1960s or the, you know, the mid-1960s, you know, bands like the Rolling Stones and the Yardbirds, who um, I think Jimmy played with, uh, were also obsessed with American blues from the 1930s, 1940s, the kind of stuff that Robert Johnson was doing. And so they even covered Robert Johnson's Traven Traveling Riverside Blues themselves, and they rev it up and everything, so you listen to it. And I don't think a lot of rock fans realize, especially classic rock fans, that what they're listening to is what British guys try to... The British guys, their version of the, of the blues from yeah, the like 1930s. Yeah, their interpretation of it. And it was so different because it wasn't just a guy in a steel guitar. It was electric, you know, it was pounding drums and electric guitars and people like Robert Plant screaming at the top of his lungs. And it sounded so different if you compare like the original Traveling Riverside and the Led Zeppelin version, but they really are similar. I mean, that, that stuff, I'd say, I mean, the, the darkness in bands like Led Zeppelin um, is more of a spiritual air to Robert Johnson then I would say more modern blues like B.B. King is, uh, even though the styles of B.B. King and Robert Johnson or a lot of these blues guys might be a little bit closer, the B.B. King's not a dark figure. You never think that B.B. King made it, you know, sold his soul to the devil. Right. Even though there is an urban legend about B.B. King that we'll, we'll, we'll attack sometime. Um, but you don't think that, oh, yeah, B.B., that guy sold his soul to the devil to be able to play, you know, Lucille and... and, and and play, um, what's his big song? The Thrill is Gone. You know, oh, no, yeah, right, right. nobody's like, well, only B.B. can play that. The Thrill is Gone. That's the Satan talking. Right. Um, but right. with Led Zeppelin, they come in, you know, and, and it's so loud and mean. And, and, and it's got a sound that... It's gnarly. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, they are the spiritual heir. And Zepp Zep was... And so, I mean, and Jimmy Page, obsessed with the cult, he bought Alistair Crowley's house in Scotland. That's crazy. And it's on Loch Ness. We'll, we'll cover that extensively sometime because Crowley, he fits into the lives of Led Zeppelin, David Bowie. He's in a top 10 UK single in the 70s. He's on the cover of Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Call Band. He's, he's really, like the thread that weaves all the rock bands together. He is. And he was also called the wickedest man in the world. Whoa. In, in the early part of the 20th century. And so Alistair will get his own. That's harsh. He'll get his own uh, episode, obviously. Uh. But Jimmy Page is really into him. There was rumors that, that Zeppelin had signed a pact in their own blood. <laughs> you know, that, that these Right, that these guys made a deal with the devil. And that's why, because they were so popular in the 1970s. And, and they were dark and they sang about weird things. They sang and about the misty, they got popular. the misty mountains and... Um, and not just, you know, saying a lot about doing it too, like all those seventies bands. Right. Like but they also sang about my precious. <laughs> that's, that's right. And they sang about Iceland. Who sings about Iceland? It's cold. Um, so, I mean, that was one of the latest where people said that, oh, they made a, made a deal with the devil. And, you know, we'll get to the eighties and the Satanism in bands. Uh, we'll talk about that sometime because that, that's its own kind of topic. Because yeah. then it gets really ridiculous. I mean, then it, it's dry, guys dressed up in makeup and having pentagrams on their T-shirts and their albums. And they're just doing it to scare parents. And it worked in the 1980s. Um, but it's all kind of play Satanism. It's all like no one's really worried that these guys really made a deal with the devil. So uh, I, think, I think Led Zeppelin was like the last of its kind when it came to bands that you could say like, these guys were, these guys were so good. They sold their souls because they got so famous and so big and so popular. Well, we've definitely covered a lot of topics concerning the devil and the deals that he's made, Mike. Uh huh. Are you still standing firm with your Saturday Night Live thing, or do you think there's anything else that? Uh... That's my lowest price. <laughs> That's my lowest price. My highest price, I'd probably demand something altruistic, like world peace or something like that. But I don't think like, he makes that kind of deal. Well, he, no. They're like I mean, individual things. They're not like... He would find a way, he would find a way to make sure that it was, uh, he or she, right. I shouldn't say, because a lot of the devils I've met aren't men. 
Um, <laughs> nice. He would he would find a way to, to, to do whatever do whatever he can to do the the, the lowest end yeah. of the deal. So if it was the lowest end of the deal, put me on an SNL as the, uh, the musical guest, and I, I, you know what? I'll sign in my blood. All right, and with that, I think we're gonna let this episode. Uh, we'll make a deal that it's over. Um, if you think of anything that you would make a deal with the devil for, send us a message. Let us know. We're kind of curious. Otherwise, we will see you next time. Thanks for listening. Show notes for today's episode are available online at othersidepodcast.com slash one. And here's a little song about selling your soul to the devil. The Old Scratch Blues. Enjoy your time now. Enjoy it while you can. You sign that paper, yeah. You sign it with your head. And when you die, you're gonna fry for nothing but a lie. The fortune and fame. For listening to today's episode, you can find us online at othersidepodcast.com. Until next time, see you on the other side.